thank you everyone for joining this session and uh, some of you know me as a uh, as a member of organizing committee of sspf 2022 so uh, i'm a research scholar in this indian institute of information technology allahabad and now we are here to uh, talk about or to know about the social network analysis basically i'm going to uh, ex explain what is social network analysis and how we can work in this area we don't have that much time today but uh, so we will uh, talk about the different aspect of the network different types of the network area of publication and the softwares that we use it will be a very short session but uh, i will try to give the overview of uh, social network analysis because it uh, it should be uh, comes under a, a different course it is a different discipline so we will try to cover it up as uh, as uh, soon as possible we will try to uh, uh, explain things okay so before yeah so just let's see uh, can you say the screen is visible yes it's visible okay yes let me minimize it okay so here are the two network graph i think it is visible so is there, there anyone who can tell me what is happening here can you identify what is going on in the uh, given graph okay so uh, these are the two very famous studies a uh, graph from very famous study and the study is was conducted in the cambridge university okay so the first graph is uh, related to a study in which uh, the communication network has been changed and uh, they have tried to uh, try to identify what things have been changed uh, uh, with the uh, use of new communication uh, networks okay so the first two graph are the Uh, are from the same organization but the first graph is representing the network that was there before the introduction of new communication network and the setting uh, setting uh, sorry the second graph is representing the network that was uh, that was there after the application of communication network so these are the uh, network approach and uh, this paper was published in the year 2005 by admic and glance and the here here is a very famous study and it is considered as one of the most famous work in the social network analysis uh, it is a visual of uh, us bloggers and it is showing that uh, uh, how they tend to link blogs to support the uh, political party or forming two dis uh, and they are forming two different clusters and this study was uh, conducted in the year 1922 sorry this study was conducted in the year 2005 and sorry this study was conducted in the year 1997 so this graph you can see that there are uh, three different clusters basically the two uh, big cluster and there is a small cluster which is yellow and it is uh, representing the people who are uh, common in both the parties and you can see here uh, there are little dots which are representing people so they are nothing but the bloggers and the, the blue blue bloggers are those who are uh, who were in the who were supporters of uh, any particular party and uh, red were the bloggers who were against the political party so uh, this uh, these are the two very basic and very famous uh, studies of social network analysis so now what is social network analysis social network analysis is a method by which one can analyze the connection across the individual or the group or the institution social network analysis has a very long history in social science and uh, one, one of the very first example of social network analysis uh, can be found in the year 2000 uh, sorry 1922 in the study conducted by almec sorry i have uh, written here i have mentioned the study also okay so uh, elmec is uh, conducted a study in the year 1922 and the study was about the influence of intelligence on the selection of associate in his study he tried to uh, he tried to see how people uh, connect 
with each other and uh, the sample of that study was the student so what he did in that study he asked the student and uh, uh, ask and uh, ask them ki wa- what you want to do what uh, with whom you want to sit in the class and with whom you want to play in the after the class so uh, they they give the name of their friends and uh, later he uh, try to establish a connection and he found that the people who were uh, who 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 took the name of their friend actually their iqs were same so this was the very first attempt of social network analysis and uh, in the second study uh, that was conducted in the year 1933 uh the title of the study was championship of preschool children uh so in second study uh, the author observed the interaction throughout the term he observed their uh, interaction and interviewed children to measure their recollection of their interaction and earlier in term so in these two studies they uh, they tried to establish uh, different uh, networks among these students and uh, that was uh, that was when the social network came into existence and uh, it is why we called the social network analysis is a combination of set- uh, social network and the graph theory so these two studies raised some issue and the questions first question was uh, that how many different ways in which individuals can be interacted and the second uh, question was that how to think about longitudinal aspect of the interactions and here we are with the social network as a result and in the year uh, later uh, after 1933 sociogram was invented by merino to uh, to address those questions it was a sociogram in which uh, the relationship between the people were represented by some lines and uh, there was a relationship and there was clustering in the graph that uh, represented the social network among the uh, actors so social network analysis is a method by which one can analyze the connection across the individual or the groups or the institution it is a combination of social network theory and the graph theory that was uh, that was uh, introduced in the year 1936 so it is a mixed method approach and uh, because of the visualization it is a both a uh, qualitative and quantitative method so how society it is basically Okay. So social network analysis is a unique perspective on how society functions. You can see in the graph here that uh, it uh, representing the relationship among the individuals. Okay? So uh, how society function it focuses on how society function instead of the uh, attributes and the personality of individuals. and uh, it does not focus on the microscopic uh, st- uh, social structure but it focuses on the uh, s- it it uh, centers the relationship between the individual group and institutions so now next question is why we need to uh, need to know about social network analysis and why we need to uh, use the social network analysis so the answer is that it can be applied across disciplines there are social network there are political network there are uh, election network there is transportation network uh, usually networks are everywhere and that is why it is uh, it is very applicable and it can be applied to any field so here are some uh, sorry here are some examples where we can apply social network analysis we can apply social network analysis uh, for the trade of goods and services we can apply social network analysis for sharing of information favor risk transmission of virus opinion access of information about job choices of behavior education political alliance and trade alliances so how to apply those uh, how to apply social network analysis in these field so there let's uh, discuss about it so take a uh, first example there is a biz- business organization and they want to improve their uh, services they want to attract more customer so that organization will use social network analysis to improve the communication flow within the organization and outside the organization 
and uh, second example could be the law enforcement agencies so law enforcement agencies can use social network analysis to identify the criminal and terrorist and similarly very famous today is the social networking sites so what social networking sites are doing today uh, like facebook and twitter they are using the social network data they are using the data of their customer in order to identify who is uh, whose friends and uh, uh, what what uh, a and is sharing with b and what uh, how their network is uh, uh, affecting uh, the other parties and this is how they are uh, they are uh, improving themselves okay so uh, after social media analysis uh, sorry social uh, networking website where where else we can apply the social network analysis is the civil society organization so so civil society organization can use social network analysis to uncover the conflict of interest uh, uh, in uh, hidden uh, connections between the government bodies and uh, lobbies and etc so this is why we should uh, we should use uh, social network analysis and understand more about it and yes one more reason is that uh if uh, somebody understand social network analysis so that person will be in a position to understand the social network structure and the flow of interaction by this they, he can identify the target influential agents now uh, having understood about the social network analysis let's uh, see the basics of uh, social network analysis so there are some basic terminologies we use in social network analysis and uh, understanding those uh, social uh, sorry the terminologies you will be uh, you will be in a you will be able to understand the social uh, graph or the sociography which are we are going to discuss so first uh, is a sociogram second vertex and nodes sages ties metrics and there are some other uh, uh, terminologies also but uh, these are the some basic terminologies so let's see what are sociogram so a sociogram is representation of a whole social network okay you can see whenever you will see a social network you will a social network analysis graph so it looks like this so it is called sociogram and next next is a node so node are nothing but the actors we can we also called uh, nodes uh, vertex okay so nodes uh, could be anything it could be a person it could be an organization it could be it could be a country and uh, next is the ties ties as written here are the relationship among the nodes one other thing i would like to mention here that uh, suppose ming is a person and arun is a person so if we talk about the ming then arun and uh, uh, all these people will be called his neighbors so in uh, in social network analysis we also use the term neighbor to represent the nearest tie okay so uh, these are the uh, most basic terminologies and now the edges edges are the link whatever link is moving from one node to another node is called edges and uh, the matrix so matrix uh, looks like this uh, this is a matrix we use when we collect uh, data uh, primary data and uh, this is one of the way of doing social network analysis so important thing to note here that uh you can see all the all the heads of the column and row are same because we uh we collect data from each and every one about each and every one so that is why uh, always row and column top row and column label look uh, same to collect data so now this was all about social network analysis and uh, its uh, terminologies let's look at some uh, very famous studies of uh, social network analysis so some uh, some of the most famous uh, example of social network analysis uh, are that first one is the economic network okay so this this study is example of a uh, economic network so in this study uh, we can see that uh, it is showing uh, who owns what in the global marketplace and uh, uh, the increased nature of the worldwide business okay 
so uh, it is not uh, very clear here but uh, try to look it uh, so you can see that here is a fox and uh, here is a costa and mcdonald so this network is representing uh, the business uh, partners or you can say suppose fox is here so fox has uh, bought uh, these companies and uh, mcdonald's has bought these companies and uh, diego has bought these company so this is the network for the uh, this is uh, a corporate network worldwide okay so next is example of trade balance analysis so uh, here nodes are representing the great eight countries and uh, seven other countries and the edges represent the trade balance between the countries you can see that all the uh, the most influential countries have a bigger circle okay uh, the france uk canada they all have bigger circle and us has the biggest circle and the uh, small countries not a small country the country who are not uh, doing so much trade has a uh, small circles and uh, again it is not very visible but uh, if you will look clearly or closely you will find that uh, the um, the size of the edges are very uh, very different some edges are very thin and some are very uh, some are very thick so these edges are representing the quantum of the uh, trade between the countries uh, taking the example of spain so spain is uh, trading with the italy and uh, but the node is not uh, very clear here so look at this example so china is trading with japan and you can see there is a outward outward edge from china to japan it means china is exporting its product to the japan and japan is importing product from the china so this was uh, the one of the example of trade balance analysis and uh, next is the most uh, popular uh, political blog and uh, the data was taken from the twitter and in this study authors try to identify the most famous uh, blog companies and uh, where people blog most about the political uh, issues or the political news and uh, here is the example of uh, news sharing communities so uh, user generated uh, tweets could uh, could uh, could uh, generate the link uh, so sorry here the nodes representing the people okay so green blue and these are the people who have uh, shared some kind of news what news uh, these news so green is repre representing the news related to the world pink is uh, rep uh, representing the news related to the us and uh, blue is for business uh, purple is for nigerian uh, blue for uh, blue for arts so these are the different uh, uh, new these are the different topics and uh, these are the notes so take the example of this person uh, i think there are uh, two notes so this blue node is uh, here because uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, sharing news about the arts but uh, the the content of uh, his news is not uh, so much and that is why he is out of the uh, sociograph and you can see uh, there are four cluster forming here and they have uh, uh, they have named the clusters also okay so this was the basic of uh, social network analysis and uh, let's move to the some major questions of social network analysis in degree out degree nodes these are not explained can you explain? so it will be explained in okay. this uh, slides okay so after basic we should uh, address these four questions one should address be these four questions if you want to understand social network analysis better so first how to represent various social networks how to identify strong and weak ties in the network how to identify key central node in the network and measures of overall network structures okay so let's uh, uh, let's uh, address the question 1 how to represent various social networks so here is a uh, here is a very simple example uh, suppose there is a school and uh, here is a teacher and uh, and a student and uh, and his parents so can anybody answer me how how the network would look like 
who will connect it to those people or is the is uh, somebody likes to explain who is connected to who ma'am a student is connecting a parents with teachers okay and uh, teacher what about the teacher okay no idea ma'am okay so uh, see here the teacher is connected to the student only okay and the parents are connected to the student it means the main the central person of this graph would be the student and the graph would look like this these are the actors father mother teacher and uh, children they are the actors and uh, see how we uh, they have uh, they have uh, made this uh, social graph so children is connected to the fathers mothers and uh, teacher is out of the graph and uh, it is alone because and it is not sharing any link with any other mother and father why because uh, he is in contact with the children only now uh, the types of graph this is the basic fundamental uh, of uh, how graphs are formed so graph could be of many types your graph could be a centralized graph decentralized graph a decentralized graph and distributed graph and how to identify the types of graph it depends on the clustering how your graph is going to cluster uh, uh, after that you can identify the uh, network type what uh, network what is your network type so graph could be of two types directed and undirected so the first one uh, wait so the first graph which is uh, written uh, given here uh, showing the directed network why directed network because you know who is directing or who is communicating to uh, with whom okay like you can see here that a is communicating with b and uh, d is communicating with c and uh, b and d are communicating with each other so such kind of graph uh, is called uh, directed graph and uh, it is usually used in the primary data and second uh, type of graph is undirected graph so such kind of graph are used more in the uh, secondary data when we uh, we collect the data from twitter or uh, reddit or any other social media websites or any journal so we use such kind of graph so here we see that there is no direction we don't know who is communicating to those but uh, in uh, such uh, in such situation we feel that we believe that uh, c is communicating to d and d is also communicating to c so that is why we use you need our sorry undirected graph when we do not know who is communicating to whom and we just assume that everybody is in connection with each other so now the next question how to identify strong ties and weak ties in the network so now we know what network looks like but uh, how to identify uh, the strength of any network so there are very uh, there are some ways to identify it first one is uh, adding weight to the edges okay so you can see here uh, different nodes are given 1 2 3 4 and uh, we have already know we already know that uh, nodes are also called vertex so you can uh, what table is representing here this that the relationship between 1 and 2 has weight 30 okay so that is why here 30 is written and uh, how this vertex has been formed so it has been formed with the help of uh, the given matrix how to meet this uh, matrix i will explain later so uh, our our relationship is more powerful when the weight are higher okay so suppose in this diagram what we can say what whose weight is higher what, whose relationship is stronger can you answer it in this graph whose weight are higher in the given graph 
Three and four. Yeah, and who has the weak uh, relation? One and three. Sorry, two and four. Two and two four. And four. Yeah, two and four has weak relation. So we can say that uh, the relationship between three and four is the stronger. It means they are the most uh, influential person in this graph. Okay. Next is the homophily transitivity and bridging. These are the other uh, other ways in which we can. Uh, Uh, uh know about the strength of the ties okay so homophily homophily means uh, uh that uh, somebody is sharing similar characteristics suppose there is a and b and a is very good in arts uh, it means that uh, b would also be good in arts okay it is a uh, very uh, similar to homogeneous where we say that uh, the group is homogeneous it means everybody has the same characteristics so similarly homophily if there is a homophily in the network it means that network is very powerful why because uh, people have same characteristics it means they are doing the same thing at the same time so look at the point of view from a politician so if you want to control a uh, uh, given population so it things will be very easy for you because you know what everybody wants in that group so that is why if your uh, a uh, network is very homo has a higher homophily it means that the network will be very strong why because ties are very much related to each other are very tightly connected to each other and uh, that will increase the transitivity so what is it so in sna uh, it is a property of ties okay it is written here is um, if there is a tie between a and b and uh, one between b and c it means a can directly contact to c or communicate with c okay so when there is a homophily we believe that there is a high transitivity and when there is a heterophily heterophily is just the opposite of homophily it means that people don't share the same characteristics and they are very far from each other and the network is very weak so what will happen in that case there will be bridges what bridges it means that if uh, if a want to connect to c or want to communicate with c then he will have to share the message with b before going to c and c will uh, sorry and b will help them in the communication process so this is bridging and uh, when transitivity happen where is the cursor yeah so when this happen your uh, network become very highly clustered and when this happened your uh, network become very weak because uh, there is a interlinked groups so many interlinked groups in your network okay so this is another way of identifying the strength of your network now how to identify the key central nodes in the network who are the most influential nodes or the who are the most influential vertex in your network now there are different uh, degrees or there are different centrality in network analysis we use the word centrality and centralities are the different uh, uh, you can say the different uh, form by which you uh, identify what character or what particular node is very powerful okay so here is the first uh, measure of uh, identifying it it is called degree centrality so what is degree centrality you can see here that 3 uh, and 5 are the two nodes who are sharing connection with most of the other nodes like you can see 5 5 is sharing relation with 2 uh, and 3 uh, and 6 and 7 uh, isn't it i am audible yes so can you see that 5 is sharing uh, connection with 4 uh, uh, people and here three you can see is sharing connection with four people no 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 is sharing connection with three only it means that uh, five in the network has highest degree centrality so this is uh, one of the way of identifying which node is very powerful now another way of identifying the um, uh, most influential node is the path and shortest path the shorter the path greater the power if suppose uh, one wants to communi uh, communicate with four okay so there are two ways of uh, communicating it 
one will go to three and three will go three will communicate his network to four and other way is that one can communicate a message to two and two will communicate his message to four so there are two shortest path of flowing uh, of uh, sharing the information so if uh, there is a very short path it means that uh, that uh, particular node is very influential in the network because he can share the information in very less time next is the betweenness centrality and please uh, let me know if you have any kind of confusion i will explain it there i will try to explain it there next uh, measure is the betweenness centrality what is betweenness centrality as the name is suggesting here that uh, any node who is uh, who is in the middle of other uh, communication suppose take the example of 3 so 3 here is between 2 and 4 he is between 1 and 5 okay so he is between two particular relation and look at the 5 so 5 is also between 2 and 6 and 3 and 7 okay it means that uh they both are in the very between they are in between of the other connection but what is very uh, what is very uh, thing to notice here is that the path uh, the path near the 5 is very is very short on the other hand the path between the path around the 3 is very longer and that is why we can see here that the node 5 has higher betweenness centrality than 3 because its score are very greater or are higher as compared to 3 to identify uh, sets of key players so this is uh, how if you will be able to identify these three things like a uh, degree centrality path and the betweenness centrality you will be able to identify the key players so whenever in your graph you see any circle is very bigger and another circle is very smaller it means that the bigger circle is more influential or powerful than the other given circle understood okay now uh, moving to the last question how to characterize a network structure now we have uh, we know all the powerful uh, agents we know all the powerful nodes we know how network looks like so next question how to characterize a network so first is the re uh, reciprocity what is reciprocity you can see in the graph here in the figure here that a and b both have both have uh, such kind of arrow here it means a and b can communicate to each other okay so reciprocity means the number of relation which are recipro uh, re uh, reciprocated over the total number of relationship in the network okay if any network has higher such kind of relationship where actors uh, can freely communicate to each other okay so it means that that network is very good if in a city there is a colony in which everybody is communicating to each other without any tension and there is a two way communication it means that society is very uh, powerful okay so this is what reciprocity um, say and uh, this is how it is uh, presented and it is also called cohesion in the network next is the density so what is density density is a ratio of a number of edges in the network over all the number of possible edges between the all pairs of nodes okay so suppose you can see the figure one here in figure one we can see that uh, there are uh, four four given ways okay four given uh, you can say the path but there could one acha before before looking at the graph please uh, note that uh, this line is representing the edges and uh, this line is representing the possible edges so suppose you can see that there are four edges but there could also be one edges here but it is not because uh, of uh, some uh, because of some issues so you can see the density of this network is 0.83 because uh, there was possibility of five kind of relationship but we have only four relationship similarly look at the second uh, diagram here so in this diagram you can see that uh, there are uh, five kind of uh, there are all the possible network are present in this graph and that is why this graph has a very higher density 
as compared to this okay next is the average and longest distance so it is just uh, like the shortest and uh, longest pass if if the people or all the nodes are very close to each other it means the path could be shorter so the shorter diameter would be preferable and it will uh, it will show you that the network is very dense now uh, next are the softwares that we use for social network analysis so for social network analysis we have different softwares and uh, some of these softwares work on the secondary data and some of these softwares work on the uh, primary data so it's up to you what kind of uh, analysis you want to do so first uh, is the uh, social uci net software so uci net software is a very good software but the problem is that uh, this software is uh, free only for 2 months it gave they gave free trial only for 60 day so if you want to try this software so first of all understand it and uh, there are many lectures available on the youtube of uh, how to use such uh, softwares and uh, so i would suggest you to please do not uh, download this software if you want to use it for free okay so the standard network analysis program it runs uh, in the windows and uh, it is good for computing the measures of network topography and single net and uh, input output of the data is special okay so two file format but uh, is now able to read the pagic files yes yes this was a very important uh, thing they have mentioned here that Uh, before uh, pagic they used to uh, run only net sorry the text files but now the software uh, read the pagic files also is a kind of uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, you know kind is a kind of file uh, which we use in the social network analysis and uh, not optimal for uh, not optimal for large network what kind of large network you cannot uh, uh the do analysis on the twitter data because they usually are very large so it is very useful for the primary data but not for the secondary data and uh, in primary data also your questionnaire should be very short if you are going to collect data through this uh, software sorry if you want to analyze things through this software and available form is uh, analyt analyt sorry analyt uh, technologies if you go to their website you will find uh, it's a link to download next we have uh, pagic so pagic is a uh, is one of the oldest uh, oldest software for a social media, social network analysis so this uh, this is a program for analyzing and plotting very large network okay intuitive window interface and it started uh, many uh, mainly a graphic program but uh, has expanded a wide range of analytic capabilities and can link to the r statistical package and it is absolutely free so uh, why we use pagic uh, so pagic will help you in um, in uh, representing your uh, network in very in a very good manner there are multiple design of uh, representing a network you can make flower you can make flower uh, you can make a star out of those networks and uh, the layouts are very good as compared to the uci net there are very there are very less layouts of uh, representing our network so pagic usually people uh, do the analysis uh, on the uh, uci net and after that they put their output they sorry say they do the further analysis uh, on the output of uci net using pagic in order to represent their data better uh second is the social network software Se second social network software is the netdraw it is uh, again one of the oldest uh, software and also very new but uh, by one of the best known name in the network analysis software and it is again absolutely free and uh, if you are using uci net then uh, you will uh, you will do all the analysis uh, using only this software so uci uci net has uh, this software inbuilt in their system other softwares so r i think uh, all of you are aware of uh, this software uh, it is uh, very new in india 
but it was there uh, in the foreign country so r also help you in analyzing and uh, doing the analysis of social network basically the secondary data analysis of secondary data second is the node excel node excel is uh, just like page it has very uh, beautiful interface and uh, there is gephi gephi is also uh, is also a very good software and uh, if you are using this software then you will be able to do uh, analysis of primary as well as secondary data and there is nvivo nvivo is not free i think it they give trial only for 40 days but i'm not sure so uh, there you can also do the analysis of secondary data and it is very easy to use r and nvivo i think comparative both are very easy to use softwares and user friendly also and r is absolutely free Hello sir. Hello. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, shall we take a break or uh, okay, should I now the next part is that the demonstration part. Yes sir. So okay. shall I? Uh, yeah. Sir, so if you have if anyone having any question, uh, just feel free to clarify those doubts. Then we'll move to the next part. anyone having any question yes before because uh, sir after that uh, there will be one hour long session so yeah so i think uh, they do not have any question so let us take a break of 10 minute then we shall be it's 253 so we'll start at 3 o'clock okay sir so we shall have a quick break of 10 minute and then then we shall start the next session